hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Links to my website, Instagram, tools I show in this video are all in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell if you want updates. Hang around and see what goes on here at Watch Complications. This is a tool review video and not just uh, what I think about the one I bought, but how to go about using it. And that is a watch case opener. There is a plethora of case tools out there of every variety you can imagine. Handheld tools of all types, bench tools for opening watch cases. If you are someone that's regularly modding or working on watches, you probably already have some sort of a handheld tool like this. I'll show this particular handheld case tool in my watch tool basics video. We'll link it above. These are great for just getting by, but they do have some cons to them. Uh, they are handheld for one, and you can hold your case in one hand and use this tool in the other, or you can use a stand. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit um, to open it. But these, you can really easily slip and scratch case. If you've been working on watches a while, you've probably done that once or twice or more. Sometimes there'll be a case back that is on really tight, and you really need leverage. And that's where bench tools come in. And you see this one here in the background. I'm going to show you the unboxing from back when I did that. Always when I get a new tool, I go ahead and video the unboxing. Just so if I do a video on it at some point, I've got that content. So here is one. I got this off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below as well. And these can run a lot of money but there are some low cost options out there. Now, if you're a regular watcher of the channel, you know when I discuss tools that sometimes, or many times I'll say, if this is something you're gonna be doing regularly, buy the good tool once and then you're done. Because a lot of these low end tools, they aren't gonna work that great. You end up throwing away and end up buying the better tool anyway, the higher cost one. You know, things you just don't wanna go the cheap route on, like a good spring bar tool or a good screwdriver set, good set of tweezers, where you'll get that, you know, Bergeon stuff, for example, or Horatech, which is a little bit lower cost, but still Swiss made versions. And then you can find, you know, the low end stuff, you know, Chinese origin, we'll call it, um, and Amazons and Ebays and all that kind of stuff. But these case tools, they'll run you into the hundreds, almost to a thousand dollars, anywhere from 500, give or take, up to 900, a thousand dollars. Sometimes you can find old used ones online for a little bit less. But there was a 120, 130 dollar option I saw on Amazon, and I thought, you know what? I bet a lot of other people out there are thinking, is that gonna get the job done for me? Is it quality enough to use regularly? Uh, is it going to hold up okay? Does it work? Does it <laughs> successfully open cases and close them? Uh, so that's what I wanted to do in this video is get one of these uh, lower cost options. Again, 120, 130 bucks is quite a bit for a tool if this is just a hobby, but it, you kind of get to a point if you're doing it enough that something like this you're going to want on your bench. I will talk about all of the stuff that came in the box and I will show the setup and operation using a case that uh, doesn't want to come undone with a regular old handheld tool. Need a little bit more leverage, a little bit more torque, and that's what this is gonna give us. So let's do it. All right, what should you expect in the box when you order this case opener? You see, I got the one with a lighter color wood base. And the stand was just like this inside of a plain old cardboard box. And then there's another small box that was in there that has the tools, the pins and the stands that go with this. It's got some weight to it, but it's, in the metal part, you can tell, not the wood. The wood's very light. You can feel that already. There we go. In the plastic, there was this little piece of wood, and you can see that it's chipped off either in packing or shipping of the thing. Not a huge deal. This isn't the most high quality piece of wood. One word of caution with this kind of material and stain on here, I've seen this on a few other lower cost products, is this stain will easily transfer to other things that it's either resting on or that you lay on it. So like if you put a piece of plastic and it rested on here for a while, um, maybe if it gets a little humid or a little bit hot on a day, over time, the, the stain can actually end up transferring to whatever surface that is in contact with it. So word of caution there. Thankfully, this one does have little pads on the underneath, which is nice. So it'll rest above the surface a little bit depending on where you're setting it. You can see we've got the bolts on the bottom. It's nice, so you could put it on a different stand if you didn't like this one or it broke or something like this. That's a good thing. Once I pull out the parts, 
I'll get this all set up. You can see it's got whole locations for all of the, the pins and the stands. There you see the number, 5788. The other side, key of watch. Interesting. And so this is spring-loaded and obviously turns. So let's see what's in the toolbox. Hopefully nothing is missing. Depending on how you're wanting to secure the case as you try to open it, you can go with this tool, this approach. You can see the part numbers on here. Or you can use these stands, which will hold onto the lugs in a different way. But I'll show you how both those work. And here we have the part that goes on the top uh, that will have the pins to connect with the case and unscrew the back. In this package, you've got screws to bolt this down to the desk if you wish to keep it secured. Uh, you've got the different case pins and then, like I said, these holders for different types of lug designs. Here's the top the vise that goes up here. By the way, I've got my Tudor Black Bay ceramic on today. Initial impressions, I guess, in terms of the quality of the parts, you can tell that the metal used here on the base is, you know, low cost, you know, cheaper quality of metal, which is to be expected. Um, but the components don't feel too bad. They, they've got good weight to them. Just make sure you align the cutout here with where the screw is. And that's got pretty tight tolerance on it, which you see there as it comes across the back of the stand. So far so good. Now the key down here will adjust the distance of the base. And option number one is this base. You can see it slides on these posts. You can see the pins underneath. This will sit down in the holes on the base and then it can adjust with whatever case size that you want. And then as you can see, you can adjust the distance and then it has these feet that you can put at whatever location these feel like uh, nylon there you go and so you can put your case and try to keep it secure between these however i think these would be a little bit more difficult to keep it really secure got a lot of pressure to put on the case a really tight case back then i think these holders will be a better option. Now, so far, I don't see any missing parts. I'll let you know if I do have anything missing. You might see that sometimes in reviews on this lower cost stuff is something arrived broken or, or missing. These holders are two-sided, so you have different lug distances. So this is the 17 and the 19, so even it has odd sizes in there, which is nice. So you can turn it one direction and use it for a 17 millimeter lug width or the other way, 19 millimeter lug width. Let's see if they've got everything in here. So there's the 20 and the 22. Got a nine and 11. So we're getting it small sizes here. Yep, got the pair for the nine and 11. And the 13 and 15. Of course, then you also have these if you have other sort of sizes that maybe aren't captured and you know, something just weird. Here I've got a 20 millimeter lug width. So I'm gonna use that just to show how this works. You'll put the case on there and this will sit between the lugs. Keep it nice and secure um, as you're twisting on the case back. These actually look reasonable quality. As you can see, that sits really nicely. It's even got sort of a little bit of a cutout curvature there. And then tighten it up, get it as tight and secure as you want. That way when you go to twist on the case back, opening and closing, it stays nice and secure. A lot of different case back types. This one is expecting notches on the case back. Let me show you an example. So here I've got, uh, this one of the Vario Trench watches. You can see it's got the spot for the pins to go um, to open the case back. For the both the high cost stands like this, or even these low cost ones, you can get the attachments for opening this type of Tudor Rolex style case back. So. A lot of different options there. You can even 3D print your own components for this if you wanted to something a little bit more custom or just designed a, a certain way. So I think it's pretty flexible. You know, I'm, I'm happy with this so far. I'd say the only little cons is okay. So there's a, an edge of the wood that was broken a little bit on delivery, and these pins see they've gotten 
moisture or something on them, but they are rusty, starting to rust a little bit. Not a huge deal, but you know, it is what it is. That's one thing. So after getting the pins out of the bag, see, not quite as bad as I was expecting. See, we've got the different tips, depending on what type of case back we're trying to open. Some are a little bit more circular, some are like square, rectangle. And so we guess pick the right ones. So I've got a case that's pretty stubborn. It's on really tight. Uh, K, regular case tool, hand tool is not going to get it open. So you can see the notches on the back of the case. There, sorry. Autofocus. And so I'll find the pins that work and fit the best. So this tool came with six sets, no missing parts. That's good. Like really small circle, a little bit bigger circle, small square rectangle, bigger square, uh, and then a couple other uh, designs for different types of cases. I want to show that these rectangle ones are double-sided. So one side's a little bit larger, the other side a little bit smaller. And that's so it can fit more than one size of notch. So one side of this is too large to go in this, the other side fits just right. So the way that the pins fit in this part of the tool is they're really friction fit. See the base, and it's got a ledge around it for going down inside of this part of the base. So it fits in there like that, again, sort of friction fit. And then you can unscrew these knobs on both sides, and then you can get the distance sized correctly. And then whenever you've got it where you want, you tighten them down like so. And then this will all go back up into uh, the base here, and then we'll open the case back. Whether I'm using the hand tool or the stand, one of the things I like to do is put a piece of plastic on the back just to help add a little bit layer of protection and not have metal on metal. So I push the wheel down, I'm holding pressure on it, making sure that I get the pins into the case back notches and then get that tightened nice and good. Once I've got it in that location, I will screw these down a little bit. So I stood up a little bit and then we'll just give it a turn. And that was stuck on there tight. That was never going to come off easily with a handheld tool. All there is to it. Let me take the case out here. I guess I can zoom back in. I can just get it off with my hand. Voila, we have an open case. And then of course, all you gotta do uh, to secure it is just reverse the process. You know, all things considered, this was $120, $130. And if you are opening a lot of cases, closing a lot of cases, you know, it is really easy to scratch case backs with this and, you know, slipping and stuff as you're trying to hold on to a case and open it. You could put the case on a small stand like this, you know, on a flat surface and apply pressure, but these can be a little bit more difficult to work with. And if you have something on really tight, uh, it's really easy to slip and scratch a case back with a hand tool. Again, hand tools come in different types of quality as well, just like these stands do, but you don't necessarily need to break the bank either. I think this will get the job done for you. I'm actually really glad I bought this one. Uh, you can easily spend several hundred dollars on, like let's say really nice ones, whether that's from like Hortec or Bergeon or one of these other companies. Well, this'll do, you could customize this a little bit. You could put this on a different base if you're not satisfied or the stain is <laughs> melting off onto other things. Or you wanna bolt it directly to your workbench. Lots of different options you can do. And like I can mention there's these whole locations so you can put the the pens in them and the nylon pegs can go on the back uh, locations where these holes are. So all in all, does what it says it's supposed to do. And if you're working on a lot of watches, open and closing a lot of cases, I think it's a reasonable investment. All right, well, I hope you found this tool review video helpful, especially if you're on the fence thinking about getting something a little fancier for opening watch cases and you don't want to break the bank with one of those high cost options, this gets the job done. I'm actually quite happy with it. I've been using it uh, for a little while and I seriously don't have any complaints other than 
you know, I think at some point I'll probably do something different with the base, but at least you have the flexibility because of the design to do that. All right, well, thanks for sticking around. Check out my other videos and my website, watchcomplications.com. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm out.